listen, the car sounded weird. It brought the noise in the looks department, but it had a dime store interior. And the people that could afford to just walk in and write a check for this thing didn't see the value in it because it was robbing parts from like Dodge Neon Caravan. It had a cheap chintzy plastic interior. And before you start throwing yourself to the floor like a three year old at Walmart, listen, I love the Dodge Viper more so than anybody else. It's an awesome American supercar. And there's a lot of other reasons why I believe that the Dodge Viper didn't sell. So let's get into it. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Like I said before, there's a whole lot of story as far as the Dodge Viper goes. And I, this video is not bashing the Dodge Viper at all. I love it, I'm thinking about buying one. There's a few setbacks I, I've got as far as, you know, they, they're minor bones to pick. To do this car any justice or due diligence, I think it would be the best thing to do would be go back and talk about why we have the Viper, how it began. Carol Shelby, Lee Iacocca, there's a couple other big names as far as producing this car and coming up with the concept car. And I think this car was, the concept car was built in the late 80s. I'm gonna say first and foremost, thank God we got this car produced. Late 80s, early 90s, this car was supposed to be a modern day interpretation of the Shelby Cobra. And we all know how bare bones and basic that car is. Well, this car was supposed to be nothing more than a modern day version of that. And that's where Carol Shelby and all these big names came to be came to play as far as making this car. Now, if you remember the 93, 94, they didn't make very many of these cars, but which later came to be the RT10, it didn't even have glass in it. It didn't have you know, you didn't have air conditioning, didn't have a roof, didn't have, it was basic bare bones, almost like a kit car. The first gen, second gen were kind of, it was pretty similar car, but the second gen, they actually moved the exhaust out to the back. And a lot of the Viper fans say arguably that this is the best sounding version of the Viper. It's my personal favorite. It kept the real Coke body, you know, re the real dramatic curves as far as the body goes. Now the motor of the Viper was actually based off a cast iron version of a truck engine that Dodge had in the late 80s. And we all know as far as packaging wise goes, under hood engine bay of, you know, a truck versus a car, two very different things. As far as keeping the center of gravity low and keeping everything tucked in and heat management and safety regulations and yada yada and so on and so forth. Everybody thinks that it was designed by Lamborghini, but it wasn't. At the time, FCA did own Lamborghini and I think it was like 1987 to 1993. But that was the time uh, they, you know, they were, this whole thing was conceptualized. I watched an interview with one of the chief engineers as far as this engine goes, and they actually had the engine designed by Yamaha. Lamborghini came into the whole equation as far as making, they didn't want to have a cast iron engine. It was way too heavy. It was just, it was out of the question as far as coming into a halo supercar like the Dodge Viper would come to be. Lamborghini was exceptional at making big cast aluminum blocks and keeping that monstrous amount of strength and rigidity as far as the cylinder heads and the engine blocks. That's where Lamborghini came into the old equation, but as far as tuning it and designing the valve train, everything up above, it was all Yamaha. Now I'm gonna use 1995 as a good round number, I know that the car came in a couple years earlier, but there was some changes and I think, and they actually changed factories in that time frame. So there was a lot up in the air. So I'm just gonna use 1995 as a good solid number. But this car, when it was introduced, this thing had an MSRP of about, it was just under $59,000. Now in the mid 90s, that was a ton of money because I believe that the average income 
of the average job throughout, you know, not top or the average income of an average earning job at the time was about 30 grand. You know, your household would have about, you know, high 50s, low $60,000 a year income. That's a lot of money for back then. And Dodge themselves even come out and said that their demographic that were actually buying this car was the blue collar workers that were saving up their money for a down payment because the people that w could just come in and write a check for it, as I said before, it really didn't see any value in, to, in this car until it's out of production or until it's gone. Real quick guys, I forgot to add, this car was super expensive to fix, super expensive to maintain and run. So therefore you had all the overhead, the running expenses of an exotic, such as Lamborghini, Ferrari, or all the others, but yet this car seriously lacked the prestigious nature. So therefore that turned off a lot of people about this car as well. I forgot to mention this, so I kind of thought I would throw this in as a voiceover. Let's get back to the video. Dodge is pretty famous for not having the best of quality interiors. And you know, this kind of reflected as far as I think the sales goes is, you know, letting the thing die off. Now, as far as coming back, I've heard that we're gonna be getting a new Viper and I've heard several stories as to why we don't have a new Viper, we haven't heard anything in the pipeline. There's articles all over the internet as far as a new Viper coming back. And I'm making this video now because I think it's important as far as if you want a V10 Viper, which we're not getting, if anything what these articles say come true and i believe it would be it just makes sense because everything that these articles are implying saying that the car is coming in at ninety thousand dollars and we're not getting a v10 we're getting a v8 and as far as everything i've heard going architecturally wise that's in the body i'm i'm hearing that they're having a hard time designing curtain airbags i don't know how much truth there is to that or not but it could it very well could be you never know i think if you want to get a viper now's the time to do it uh the first gen second gen they were pretty pretty much the same car they were pretty similar but the hardcore purists are going to be able to uh chime in here and tell everybody the difference third fourth gen they're pretty similar but the fifth gen is pretty much what set it apart and i will leave a link below even Matt Ferrer on the Smoking Tire did a video as far as this car sitting on the showroom floor. You know, taking this car from 120, 130 down to like 105 just to get sales. And then when they killed it off and announced that the discontinuation in 2017, the car flew off the shelf like hotcakes. And there's still, there's cars fetching right now the ACR Extreme Aero Package over 200,000, quarter million dollars. Like I said, nobody wants it till it's gone. That's why I know in 2007 and 2010 to 2012, they had a couple hiatuses. That's why you'll see a couple final editions sprinkled in here and there. You'll see them come across for sale. The 2017 is no different with the final edition itself as well. But the fifth gen, I think it was just priced too high, didn't have enough power. You had the Hellcat available at the same time as the Viper. The Viper just seemed like a less obvious of a choice. It was very cramped, but it has the perfect American supercar recipe. It was a big fat tire, a massive engine, manual transmission only, a small tube chassis, two seater, and it was just go fast, burn gas. I don't think that the Challenger is going to cut it as far as like having an iconic Halo supercar available. So I do see Dodge coming back with a Viper. It might not be what we think. I'm hearing that we're gonna be getting a V8 instead of a V10. Only time will tell. But I do hear that it's gonna be coming in right around the $90,000 mark. That's mainly the reason why I think they've been coming in with all these Hellcat variants as far as like the red eye and keeping everything right around that $80,000 mark. I think that they've been, you know, testing the water. You know, the Demon came in about that price. The Super Stock's coming in about that price. The Red Eye's coming in about that price. And then you've got other variants to other lines. And you got the Trackhawk, and then now we've got the Charger. And I did hear that Dodge saying that if the Viper came back, it would be 
here to stay. I don't think that we're gonna be getting one as soon as 2022, but I do think uh, the Viper will make a return and I, for one, am excited. I just think that Dodge needs to bring that Halo car back. So drop your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe. Give this thing a big thumbs up. We'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.